welcome to the toilet training series part 10. In this segment, we're going to be discussing the second common problem that can come up, well, during toilet training or after we think that the process is actually finished and we find out, hey, there's a problem. So what can we do about this issue? And well, what is this issue? So problem number two that we're gonna discuss now is that the child will not make in a bathroom outside the house. And this does happen very commonly. Kids do get nervous sometimes, depending on the personality of the child and some other factors. It can happen that a kid does not want to make outside the house. So this can make life kind of complicated for you as the parent. And of course, it's not pleasant for the child either. What can we do about this? So tip number one is just like in the first problem, which we spoke about in segment nine, we want to really remain low key here and make the problem less problematic as opposed to blowing the problem up and making it much bigger. So we definitely want to stay low key here, not be hysterical, and remember that we are going to have some tips and tools that we can use to address the problem and that it will be solved eventually. Now, tip number two is you might want to ask the child here, do you have any ideas that will help you? Okay, so you can say to the child, what would help you make in a different toilet? And sometimes kids, when you ask that question, will have something really good, a really good idea to contribute, a really something that you can do to help them, and it will be practical and you can use it, and especially if it's their idea, it will probably be very helpful. Now, not all kids will come up with an idea here, and that's okay, but we can try it if it doesn't work. Um, tip number three is if the child's in a play group or a school setting, you may want to ask the teacher who deals with this age group and has probably heard of this problem more than once what you can do and get some tips from him or her. Tip number four. You might want to just bring along a toilet seat insert that kids use in this age bracket um, when they're being toilet trained. And you might want to just take it along with you if you're going out or let's say if they're in a school setting, you might want to ask the teacher if it's okay to leave it there for them to use there. But the idea here is that there's two benefits to this. Number one is it's something familiar to them. It's a toilet seat insert that they know. And number two, and also that it's theirs. And number two is that it takes away some of the fear that kids have of falling into the toilet, which especially if it's not a toilet made for young children, it's just a regular toilet, then that can be a fear because it's kind of big for them. So that's tip number four. Tip number five is be prepared with a small treat. So especially if you're going out or even in the school setting, you can talk to a teacher about if this would work, but you can tell the child that they will get a small treat if they're able to use this particular bathroom. Now, you don't wanna make it such a huge treat that it becomes a humongous deal, but at the same time, something that they would like, something that would be a little bit motivating for them. And in this way, we also take some of the pressure off of trying to convince them and begging them or going out of our minds because we don't know what to do. Um, tip number six is take a diaper along with you if you have to go out and tell the child that if they really, really need it, they can use it. Now, it's important that if you're going to do this, that you tell this them you tell this to them calmly and that you don't shame the child. So we don't want to tell a child something like, you know, gee, if you're going to be a baby about it, then I guess you could have a diaper. Um, we would really want to make it just very matter of fact. And what happens is that if we, if we use it when we really, really need it, because the child just refuses to make and it's making us crazy, it's, we're using this as an aid, it's a temporary aid, till they get to the point where it just won't be an issue anymore. And typically it will pass 
with a bit of time as they mature. So thanks so much for listening to part 10. Feel free to leave your comments, questions, or feedback below or at my website, www.getparenttools.com. Looking forward to hearing from you.